This is Cameron Chai from azom.com and I'm speaking to Mehdi Sudi from Swinburne University. He's going to tell us a little bit about his uh, PhD research project. How are you today, Mehdi? Good. How are you? Very well, thank you. So you're working on negative thermal expansion materials, that's right? That's right. Yeah, it's a very interesting field of materials in, uh, science. And so what actually are negative thermal expansion materials? Uh, well, uh, it's very simple. It, it's, it's regarding the materials that when you heat them, they shrink. Uh, usually people expect that materials expand when you heat them. Uh, but th th these are the materials that shrink uh, when they are heated. So that's quite unusual behavior. It is unusual and uh, uh, the field has been kind of ignored by scientists so far. But when we uh, you know, started working on it, we have seen a lot of interest from different industries. Okay, like which sort of industries are interested in these types of materials? Uh, as you can imagine, any industry that has got parts or components that are exposed to high temperatures, the design engineers prefer to uh, use materials that do not expand because right. they have to allow for expansion but they don't want to allow too much for expansion. It affects their design like um, imagine aerospace, um, mm -hmm. rocket ships when they have um, temperatures you know exceeding a thousand degrees Celsius uh, the expansions are massive in that region so they cannot use metals because they expand uh, you know hugely but uh, so they got use ceramics but ceramics are not uh, the same as metals, they don't have the same properties. Uh, so when we talked to the uh, people in the aerospace industry, they showed a lot of interest. And then uh, we switched fields to electronics. And then dentistry, when dental fillings expand or contracts, uh, they, they you know, introduce a lot of pain. Uh, so if you have a metal, an alloy that does not expand or contract, with different uh, temperatures, that would be of a lot of interest. Also, uh, steel structures, metal structures, uh, bridges, which are yep. made purely of metal. Uh, if we can find a metal or alloy or alloy structure that does not expand, um, uh, you know, they will, they will benefit from it in their design. What about things like railway tracks and things like that? Uh, railway tracks uh, are another area of interest, but because of their size, um, we would expect that if we find such an alloy or metal, it would be a little bit expensive. Right. But with railway tracks, yeah, six months ago in, in 2008, uh, when the temperatures in Victoria went to about 47 degrees, all the railways actually bent and they put the trains out of service for two days. So I was actually approached by a person from the Queensland, sorry, uh, Victoria Rail, and they said, do you think that your findings in future will help us? I said, yeah, absolutely, but the cost will, you know, yeah. sky high. Yeah, and, uh, yeah it, it, it will be interesting for them. Maybe they have to compromise between downtimes in um, hot, hot air conditions and cost of setting up their rails. Right. And what, what sort of materials are typically non-negatively well, thermal expanding? Well, typically uh, zirconium, uh, cubic zirconium tungstate is the uh, most popular material with negative thermal expansion. Uh, but then again, we know uh, it's limited in its applications because it's very brittle. Um, then there are some polymer composites uh, where they have actually mixed negative thermal uh, expansion metals with other polymers and uh, they are not very famous because they are not uh, used in the industry they're not commercialized if you like right. in the in the lab environment they have found some materials like uh, like silver iodide mixed with copper iodide uh, silver iodide has got negative thermal expansion and copper iodide has got positive and they mix them and they get zero thermal expansion uh, but in the real world out there in the industry world uh, there are not many materials with negative thermal expansion. And what's the reason for that? Is it they're too expensive to produce or they're too exotic? I would say it's because they're too exotic. It's, it's so far the, the uh, assumption has been that they are beyond reach. What do we mean? Thermal expansions of negative with metals, so it, they can't be rich. So we have sparked on a journey, if you like, that will probably initiate other researchers uh, to work on these materials and hopefully uh, useful findings in this area. Okay. And to make these, uh, these, 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 neg these negatively thermal expanding materials, do, they, do you need to use special processes to produce them? Uh, I'm using direct metal deposition uh, 
uh, technique, which is uh, laser assisted. So with laser, we uh, melt powder, metal powder or uh, you know, alloy powders to create structures, very fine and complex structures. This machine is uh, available only in Swinburne University. It's a very, uh, very, very advanced uh, process and it can give feedback of the process, the actual melt process uh, through cameras to the camera, uh, to the computer. And I can actually use uh, uh, CAD designs to create complex structures out of nothing. So you, you put a plate and the laser melts the powder, the metal powder and creates the structures. So that's the technology we are using and that's going to be uh, helping a lot in realizing our imaginations. And how far along is your research? Are you having, are you producing some good results so far? Uh, of 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 uh, finished my first series of samples, uh, which is dealing with uh, engineering metals like stainless steels and tool steels. I've measured their uh, thermal expansion using the electrometry uh, methods. Uh, now the next step for us is to mix them, right? To mix them and see if we can decrease the thermal expansions of these metals. The next step for us is to create our second set of samples with simple structures. Okay, so maybe we'll come back and speak to you in 6 to 12 months and see how you're going then. then. Hopefully, yeah. Alright Mehdi, thanks very much for telling us about your research and uh, negative thermal expansion materials. Yeah, thank you.